Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. One of the things I love about Android is how much you're able to customize the phone to make it feel like it's your own. And one of the ways you can do this on Samsung Galaxy devices is through GoodLock. Over the last couple of months, Android Pie has been rolling out to Samsung phones and with that, GoodLock wasn't working at first. Samsung have just released the update for Android Pie. So now you can use GoodLock on all Samsung devices running Android 9. I thought I'd go through what you can do with it. So you can see here it says good luck and redesign your Galaxy. So this is the main screen you're greeted with. And here we have all the different modules, I guess, that make up good luck. So you've got lock star, quick star, task changer, routines, clock face, multi star, and nav star. And those make up the unit category. Not sure why they named it that. And they've also got the family category here. Again, no idea. And that's got nice catch, one hand operation plus, edge lighting plus, edge touch, and sound assistant. So if we go through them one by one, um, they're all basically different ways of customizing your phone. So you can see Logstar says create new lock screen style. So let's open it up. So if you click the plus here, so you've got all these different layouts basically. You can change where the clock is, you can change the type of clock. And you can see here, if you click on the plus button, you can add different app shortcuts to, to your lock screen um, see what other clocks you've got lots of different options basically you can change different item visibility so you can see there's this text swipe screen to unlock you don't have to have that if you don't want to the lock icon all sorts and if you click save and then click apply that applies that to your lock screen and you can also then change the unlock type so you can choose by default i think it's swipe you can have swipe up swipe down swipe left swipe right whatever you want um, and then you see the app shortcuts we chose earlier. You can choose how you interact with them. So the default is Samsung's one, which is swiping up. You can have it as just tap, or you can have double tap, whatever you want. Okay, so let's check it out. So we go back to the lock screen, and now you can see it's completely customized how we set it up before. Um, or we'll just tap, we can go straight into BBC Sport. Uh, it's not going to pick up my iris because my camera's in the way, but I've done my fingerprint. There you go, straight into the app. I don't use the lock screen myself, I like to go straight to my home screen, so I'm going to turn that off, As a, but still, it's pretty cool that you can change it if you like using it. Okay, so moving on to the second one, we've got Quick Start. So Quick Start is really useful. You can basically change your Quick Settings panel, to, again, to however you want it. So let's turn it on. So you can see by, by default, I'm using just, this is the normal One UI look. Um, I do have the night mode that comes on at night automatically, but at the moment, it's just a normal white and blue. So you can change it to whatever you want, really. So look, let's change to like a transparent with a blue, or you can have it yellow if you wanted to, which is a bit bright for my liking, but whatever. Or you can just have it literally wh whatever you want. Um, you've got so many different options. You can change the blur, blur settings, all sorts, and if you click apply, so that's that one. The thing that I like Quickstar for the most, I like to leave the panels but Samsung's default, but you can also change what icons you can see here. So you can see now that I've turned Quickstar on, everything is gone from from around this area. You can choose when the network information shows. I like to have it on all the time. Um, so let's put network back on. So you can see my signals come back. You can have your IMS icon, so you see got Wi-Fi calling. You can have the alarm setting on and off, so if you've got an alarm set, usually you get an icon, but I don't want that. Um, you can have the volume one on, but I always leave my phone on vibrate anyway, so I'll have that off. Um, we'll leave flight mode for when we're on flight mode. Let's put Wi-Fi, so there we go, Wi-Fi's back. Um, you can have the battery icon. I prefer to have that off, just the percentage shows for me, so that's fine, that's that gone. Uh, NFC, don't need to know NFC's on. The Bluetooth one shows, um, Usually if your Bluetooth is on, but not connected, it will still show the icon, but you can turn that off. Mine is connected at the moment to my watch, so it does show. Data saver, power saver, not interested, so I'm gonna leave those off. So you can see uh, one of the one of the controversial changes that came with Android Pie was that the clock moved to the left. And you can see if you've got a couple of notification icons that becomes cluttered quite quickly. Um, but if you click on clock position, now you can change it. So you can have it back to the right, how it used to be. You can have it hidden completely if you like, if you wanted that, or you can have it in my preferred position, which is in the middle. The middle is not really in the way of anything. And then the other thing you can do, you can add this notification pop-up button. So this is quite cool. If you turn this on, then in your notifications now, 
I can't really show that at the moment because I don't have a notification for an app that supports it. But basically you can see it adds the little pop-up window button. So you can open a notification and in theory go straight to that app as a little pop-up view so you don't lose what you're doing currently. So that's quick start. So that's again, very handy. So this third one is one I really like. This is Class Changer. So you can see at the moment, Samsung's default task switching panel. You can't really see much when you're in the default view. Um, and then you have to, if you've got lots and lots of apps open, it can get a bit tedious scrolling through all the windows. Um, so what you can do, you can turn this one on and then you've got four different options. So you can have, you can have stack, which brings them a bit closer together. You can have list, which is like a very old school Android where they're all in a list. You can have carousel. So carousel is pretty similar to the default. It's just got a bit more of a 3D animation. Um, but then you can go to, again, my favorite, which is grid. So when you go to grid, you just get a grid of apps. So let's open a few more just so you get a better idea. Okay, so you can see you pretty much six applications at once and it makes it much easier to just switch between whichever ones you want. And yeah, I like it a lot. It's a lot nicer, I think, than the default Android view. Okay, um, so let's go back into it. Um, so the fourth one on the list, another good one. This is routines. This one's pretty straightforward. You can add custom routines to happen at a certain time or a certain event. You can basically have certain things happen automatically based on the trigger. So one I like to use in my car is to get Android Auto to start automatically. And um, can do this by default in the Android Auto app, but I feel like you get a bit more control here. So what I can do, I can say Bluetooth device connection status and also battery charging. And then when these happen, I, I like to have my Wi-Fi turned off then when I get into the car. And then I'd also like to launch an app okay so now that we've set up the sort of basic parameters if we tap here on the space and you can see these are the bluetooth devices that i usually connect to so i'm going to choose my car so that's that and then the app let's do the same so it's just going to load the list of apps go android auto click ok so what it's basically saying is when i'm connected to my car's bluetooth and my phone is charging turn off the wi-fi and launch android auto so we click save, really useful. Let's go back. Um, you got clock face. I'm not really going to show this one because it's pretty simple. You can basically just show, you can you can just choose basically what you want your always on display or lock screen clock to look like. Multi-star, this, this enhances your multitasking basically. Um, so you've got quite a few options here. So by default, when you open an app in split screen, so just choose one here, let's drag it up to the top. You can see there's a blue highlight there. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but personally, I prefer to change it. So let's go back. So let's change the color. Let's go black. Uh, so let's try that again. So there you go. Now it's black. It just looks a bit cleaner if you ask me. Um, let's go back. So if you want to use this feature, use multi window without pausing. That's let's say if you've got YouTube and a game running, you can do that at the same time. So this option here, enable multi window to all apps, it's really useful. Um, some apps don't support multi window. The only one I can think of really is Instagram. But with this, you're able to use Instagram in the multitasking. You still get a warning that this might not work, but it does work now, which is pretty handy. Um, so yeah, so I like that. Uh, what else we got? So we got Navstar. So this is mainly for people who use the navigation bar. So I'm just going to turn that on because I don't. So let's see, you can choose a different style. So you can have cake on it, cheese, or whatever you whatever you want really. You can go for like a normal stock looking Android kind of thing. Or what you can do, you can do your own configuration completely. So you can go new config, you can change the background color, you can change the button layout, you can have it more to the right, more to the left or default, and you can add buttons as well. So you can add two more buttons here to your navbar. So let's go screen capture and open notification panel, click done, oh, not cancel, save. And now you can just choose your config here. So you can see you've got your new buttons here and they both work like you'd expect. You get your normal screenshot. So yeah, so it's not something I would use because I use the full screen gestures, but for those of you who do use the navbar, it's a pretty handy feature. Um, that's the main customization ones, and you've got a few more options here on, on the family section. Um, this one's pretty cool, it's called Nice Catch. What it does is it just gives you a list of what's vibrated your system recently. So sometimes you might have that thing where your phone vibrates and you might not have noticed what it was, and there was no notification, that kind of stuff. So this just tells you literally every single time your phone, there's something something has vibrated your phone and what app it was so you can find out what ones are causing those problems it's got a few other things like i can tell you when you wake your screen up that kind of stuff pretty nice so you've got here one hand operation plus this app is really good 
So what it lets you do, you can see these little blue bars here. Let me just make them bigger so that you can see them. Uh, I'll just make the, them bigger for now so you can see them a bit more clearly. Um, but basically they allow you to have gestures on there. So you can have a straight right gesture, diagonal up or diagonal down. And by default, they come with a normal home multitasking and back, but I've set them all to previous app just because that's how I'd like it to be. Um, I keep the touch width nice and, nice and small so that, and I have the transparency fully, so you can't see them. Uh, let's keep the size a bit smaller. And uh, what it allows me to do then is just quickly swipe between apps. So I'm just swiping between one of the two apps now very, very quickly. So this is great because when you have the nav bar open, you can just double tap recents to go to your previous app. You can't do that on full screen gestures, but now that you have one handed operation plus, you can just set your own gesture to do that and it works flawlessly. Um, I know there are third party apps available in the Play Store that you can do this on, but having Samsung give something straight from them is it's really handy. Um, so let's go back to Goodlock. What else have we got? So we've got Edge Lighting Plus. Um, so this one, it's not the most useful, but it is pretty handy. You can choose different effects that you want for your edge lighting and the transparency, the width, the duration, all sorts. And you can then also, if you click, so if you're in certain ones, if you go to color, and custom color, you can have different apps show different colors. So similar to your notification LED, you can have red for Gmail, blue for your SMS, green for WhatsApp. I have it set so when my screen's off and I get a notification on one of those apps, my screen just glows around the edge with those colors and I'll know which app it's from without having to look at, without having to dive into my phone deeply. You've got Edge Touch as well. This one's not that useful, I don't think. Basically, when you're holding your phone, you might get some false touches on the edge of the phone. This lets you choose how sensitive you want that to be. I mean, I don't really know if anyone's had problems with this before. So I've never really had an issue with it being not sensitive enough. So you can make it more sensitive, you can make it less sensitive. I'm just going to leave it as the default. And then finally, you've got Sound Assistant. Sound Assistant is pretty good. Um, it gives you a few options. The f my favorite one is this Control Media Volume. So by default, when you change your volume, you're changing your ringtone volume. For me, I like to keep my phone on vibrate at all times, like I mentioned earlier. So controlling the media volume is much more handy. Uh, I know Android automatically does that when you've got media playing, but being able to control it all the time is really good. Um, you can have different scenarios. So you can say, when I get home, put it on silent. When I get to work, put it on silent again, or whatever you want. Um, you can control individual app volumes. So if you've got certain apps that you don't want to ever make any noise, you can do that. So you can also do stuff like play audio from apps at the same time. Don't know why you'd want to do that, but the option's there. And this is pretty cool. You can change the sensitivity of your volume buttons. So I'm just, but I'm just going to leave that on the default as well, to be honest. You've also got a few other more, you've got a few more options here, but that's it pretty much. So yeah, so that's good luck. Samsung could update and add some more features in the future. But for me at the moment, there's plenty of stuff to play around with and you can really then make your phone unique. I love that you're able to customize this much with your phone without having to root it. Um, not many manufacturers let you do that, but really I think they should all should because none of the things I've changed impact the system in any way. They just make it feel more personal to me and more pleasing to use for me. And that's what it's about really. Um, so yeah, so if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.